All right, welcome to Bangers and Faders Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Lauer. This is my co-host, Will Chu. Today, we're going to be talking about our weekly schedules as a D1 player and a D3 player and how they differ and different things about what we do to prepare our bodies to compete at the best ability we have. So would you like to get us started on what happens during your typical week at Maritime? Yeah, um, so I live near Maritime, so I'm able to commute to save money. Um, so usually, like, in season right now, I am I have classes. I start at 1130. Uh, I end at 4, 4.15, but my, my practices start a little earlier. So I come to practice late, and then, you know, we... I just hop in and usually get some swings in, get some fielding in, get some throws in, and then, and then we, we I would head out. Um, we after practice, we I would head out. I would go to the gym, um, and then I would lift depending on the day what I'm doing. But I would lift and then probably get a few more swings in you know, after practice, because that's just how I do it. And then I'd say around like, around like 10 o'clock, I'd probably head home. And then, yeah, that's, that's usually the days I have school. And the days I don't have school, um, I probably wake up around like 4.30 to go to work. Um, I, I, I work early, early shifts. So I wake up early, go to work, get off work at around one or something, get, get, get ready for practice. And then once practice is over, probably head home, you know, get some, get some work done, get some homework done and then head to bed. And my, my, my Saturdays and Sundays are probably, probably quite similar depending on when, when the practices are, um, Usually it's earlier in the morning, so uh, I would say I would wake up, probably go to practice, and then probably get a quick hit, quick lift in after, and then and then maybe some some swings, some throws, and yeah, and this repeats. You know, you, you gotta always be be trying to get your body stronger, try to try to keep yourself healthy, and and. Uh, as well as balancing, you know, your schoolwork and, and, you know, even a job, if, if that's what you need to do, you know, you got to do what needs to be done. So. So what, what kind of stuff are you doing in terms of like your hitting progression? Like, do you have drills that you go through every day or are there certain things? I try to keep it simple. I don't, I don't want to make it too tough for my own brain to handle. You know, if it's too many drills, I feel like my swings would just go whack. Uh, I would say I start off uh, after getting loose and stretching. I would, you know, hit off the tee, but without using any legs. And I would just try to drive the ball up the middle. I try to square everything up, up the middle, you know, get used to get used to the swing path and get used to barreling baseballs up in the sweet spot. And then after a few swings of that, I would, I would incorporate my legs and, um, you know, also get, get my bath pet, bat path ready, you know, start, start trying to square baseballs off on the sweet spot. And then maybe, maybe a little exit Vila competition. And then, and then we, we go into soft toss that it's just, I try to I try to get the ball out in front. I try to I try to hit it up the middle, and even when I'm late, I try to drive a line drive so I know that my bat bat path is in the right spot. You know, so I have a lot of a lot of margin for error. Um, and then and then we go into BP, and then I try to be early on BP. You know, I try to be early so I can practice adjusting to breaking balls. So let's say I'm early, you know, I got to, I got to be able to hold, you know, stay on, stay on the ball, be able to keep my hands back and drive it the other way if I'm early. So that's, that's pretty much my hitting progression. Um, I'd say my pitching is probably, you know, I start off bands, 
start stretching, making sure my body's warm. And then once it's warm, I take off my hoodie, you know, loosen up a little, get, get the hip mobilities in and then, and then we start throwing. And then if I'm throwing a bullpen that day, then, you know, I head to the bullpen, you know, start off a little light toss. And then, you know, I have, I have a few, few pitching drills I do to get my command down and, and then we just, we go from there. We, we just see, see how the day goes, you know? Awesome. So in terms of just how you go about your lifts, what are you doing there? And what about like with practice? Do you guys have organized lifts as a team? Do you have, how does, how does that work with school? Um, our coach is pretty flexible with what we do. Um, I say he, he, that's a pretty good thing to do for, for your players. You know, your players aren't stuck to a specific program you have to do. So you, we get freedom. Um, but most of the guys were pretty hard. So you could tell that they, they have been lifting a lot and they're, they're huge, you know? Um, so yeah, we, we do whatever we want, but from what I do, is um i i do deadlifts a lot i and then afterwards i would do box squats and then reverse lunges and then uh goblet split squats and then for that i just try to go down slow and then be as fast as i can going up and uh then i would do bulgarians and then sometimes i would do bulgarians where i jump I, I do a little hop, so it's uh it's a it's much tougher on your legs. And yeah, I mean I think that that's pretty much it. And then I also get swings in and stuff like that. So and then for an upper body day I would probably do like chest, chin ups, shoulder press. Um, well, I would bench chin chin ups, uh shoulder press and then I would do some back. I would I would do lat pull downs and uh, some curls to strengthen my elbow a little bit, the forearms, and yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, that's great. And then my last question for you would be: What does a typical practice look like for you guys? What do you guys do during practice? How's it scripted? And give us like a layout of what a D three practice looks like. It's it's honestly very fun. I, I find I like I want to go to practice every day because you know my coach makes it really fun for us, um, and we take it very seriously because we we know we know that it's important to you know how you practice is how you're going to play in games. So we try to we try to we basically try to be perfect in practice, but it's it's also very fun. So we start off usually with. Well, obviously stretching, warming up and everything, and then some some little stuff like footwork or whatever, you know, maybe some base running in the beginning. And then afterwards we go into hitting. And then the hitting is where everyone's excited about. You know, everyone loves hitting. So we get on field BP and the field is absolutely beautiful. So, you know, I love it there. I love hitting on the field. And then and then we would go, we would go, people would go shag and everything. You go to your positions and people hit BP. And then afterwards, they would probably do uh, IO. They would do an IO and um, working on stuff like cutoffs and and how the outfielders are going to approach a, approach a ground ball or anything, anything specific that, our coach wants to do that day. We also, well, after the IO, we would probably do some work with catchers or, you know, letting them throw down or something. Nothing too crazy. Depending, it really depends on what our coach really wants to do. But yeah, usually after the IO, both infield outfield split, they go into their separate, uh, separate places and, you know, work on their own crafts and afterwards that's pretty much on, you know, one, once, once that's over with 
we're pretty much done. And most guys either go lift, go eat, and then go about their days, you know? That's interesting because for me and other people that I've known going to different schools, it's very rare you have BP first. I feel like that's always at the end and everyone's tired and you're all sitting around. So I think that's an interesting way to handle practice, get BP over yeah. with. It's still people's engaged. And then you go do your stuff. And like the fact that you haven't done your stuff yet kind of keeps you locked in during the BP. I think that's yeah, I mean, it's, pretty interesting. I think it's, it's, it's also, also a way to don't do that. It's also a way to fire the players up. You know, everyone wants to hit. So, oh, that's the first thing you do. And then afterwards, oh, we hit well. We're all having fun and everything. And then you go into go into a field thing. I think that's a great way of running it. You know, I feel like going to practice and thinking, oh, I got to go field and do all that. And afterwards, then I can hit BP. You're going to go through the first half of practice all, you know, you know, you don't want to do anything. You don't, you're going to be all drowsy. You're going to be all, all um, sluggish. And then you go into hitting and then you're like, okay, this is fun. You know, I'm excited. So I feel like, I feel like hitting first is definitely better. And our coach you know, throws really good BP. So that's awesome. That's yeah. Fun. So for our school, it's a bit different. Um, a lot more of a regiment. So, our days are pretty scripted out for us at Siena. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, we're lifting 5 a.m. to 7. Um, you don't necessarily get there at 5. You're kind of – you got to be up at 5 to be there at 5.30. But um, So that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We got that to start our day. We lift, and then we do some sprint work. Um, then – for me, right now, during this semester, I have class from 8 to 12 every day. So we're in the classroom a lot. Um, really trying to make sure I graduate and get all my grades at, and do a high, do well with my grades. Um, I take a lot of pride in that. I want to make sure I get my degree and go on and do some good things with that degree. So that's also a priority of mine. Um, from there, uh, we got practice one to four right now, since we're inside, it's not necessarily one to four just because of availability and stuff. But once we're out on the field, it'll be one to four. And basically that's sort of my day. I would obviously have meals mixed in there. Um, after practice, probably eat dinner and then do some homework and, some other logistical stuff like working through this podcast and editing stuff and all that. That's sort of what my typical day looks like. And during the season, I like to be in bed by just about nine, sometimes maybe a little later. Definitely want to be asleep by 10 just because if you, if you get minimal sleep, it's very hard to recover every day when you're waking up at 5 a.m. one day and then you're waking up at seven the other day to go to class and you really need to have somewhat of a internal clock where you're waking up early consistently. So it's not like a shock when you're doing it all the time. Um, so that's kind of how our week's scheduled during the week. We'll have that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, during the weekend, it's usually we don't have practice on Sundays. Sometimes we do because we'll be rained out one of the days during the week. Um, Saturdays, we typically have practice and preseason right now, we're doing live at bats at 5 a.m. in the morning, be there at 5 a.m. So getting up at 430. I've definitely not enjoyed those moments when I've had to throw live right now. I'm throwing on Thursdays, so I'll be throwing today. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit nicer when you don't have to throw at 5 a.m., but I feel like it's an initiation process for a lot of the younger guys where you, you just got to go in and get it done and compete to the best of your abilities, given the circumstances. Um, it just has to, we have to do it because there's only certain availability at this facility we go to. And um, it's just part of it. It's, it, I almost think those, those days are the ones you remember most because it's out of the ordinary and, I feel like everyone being there together and having to show up and make it there, it kind of like brings your team a little closer because nobody really wants to be there at 5 a.m. hitting and pitching. But 
we all did it. So we're getting closer and we all can relate in some way in terms of that. So that that would be the typical week. Sundays, um, I didn't used to, but now I've kind of designated that as a rest day. Um, Because in the past, I would like overwork myself and then I wouldn't be 100% during the week. So having that rest day on a Sunday or Saturday, even though I had to wake up early, sometimes I'll use that as a rest day. Um, Having that to regroup and then be able to attack the week strong is a bit more beneficial than running yourself ragged every day. And I found that to be very important and beneficial to my progress. Um, In terms of like what our practices look like, basically what we got is we get there and we'll say it's during the spring schedule. We would be there at one and you have to be there one sharp if you're late you get kicked out and you're banned for a week. So you got to make sure you're on time. You get banned. <laughs> yes, you will be banned for a week. We've had, Damn. Damn, we've had some true. guys have to learn that the hard way, but it's obviously not ideal. And then you got to be there one sharp. Stretching starts right at one. We go through our like daily warm up. Um, that usually takes about 10 minutes. And then we have about a 30 minute block obviously for pitchers it's a little longer i think we get like 40 minutes the position players warm up they aren't necessarily doing so too much throwing because they just have to get their arms loose and then those guys go into fielding while us pitchers are getting our throwing in for the day with working on a command and pitches and all that um then we all convene together at about 150 And typically at this time, we'll either do like a team infield outfield or we'll get right into like team defense. So the pitchers will be involved, whether it's we're doing bunk coverages, first and thirds, um, just a bunch of different things. And usually that'll go for about an hour. We'll do that stuff, really work on like getting it right. It's been important. I think this year specifically, we've gotten it really good compared to years past where everyone kind of understands what's going on and everyone's executing a lot better and at a much higher rate. So that's exciting. And then from there, usually we'll have some sort of activity. So like, for example, we play this game called one pitch where the hitters get one pitch to hit the ball. And it's more of like a defensive drill because you get one pitch, it's either you foul it off and you're out, you swing and miss and you're out, you hit it back into the catcher's mitt and you're out, or you hit it in the field and you have a chance. So it really puts emphasis on putting the ball in play and our fielders getting live reps. So I think that is something that a lot of our guys enjoy. It's pretty fun. We've also done it where we do bunt scrimmages in the same manner where you get one try to do a bunt and – Obviously, it's a bit difficult with bunting because we had it where it's throwing different pitches and fastballs that are coming in pretty hot. So we kind of have it outlined where the pitcher is standing on the mound. There's a machine that pumps it in there for him. And then we all react and we have certain plays we're trying to run through. And I think that those sort of skill-based things have helped us a lot with translating it to the gameplay. And then from there, usually that goes maybe an hour. We'll see usually probably somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour, depending on the day. And then from there it's BP. And right now being indoors, the pitchers don't have to stay. But once we're outside, we'll have to stay and we'll be also helping out with BP shagging fly balls. Um, and yeah, that's sort of what our practices look like. Um, obviously, if you have to throw a bullpen or you're throwing live during the week, that's another thing you have to get done and prepare for. But those are usually once or twice a week tops, and the other days are game days. So that's sort of what the schedule looks like. Um, you have anything to add from that? I think I think you. You made it very 
descriptive. So I think most people know, but like, what's your warm up routine? Like you just do bands, you do plyos or. So my know. typical warm up routine before I throw is I really am big on hip mobility. I think that is what drives everything. I don't even necessarily warm up like my arm with bands every day. It's very, I do them pretty minimally. I would say if I do bands, it's probably once or twice a week tops. I'm not a big proponent of doing it daily because I feel like you're just wearing out your shoulders too much. Um, I'm big on mobility. I think that's important. Um, I don't necessarily stretch every day with mobility, but I like to do specific things like whether it's um, hip cars, which I'll put a video below of me talking about this. And then you got hip 90-90s. You got all these different exercises I like to do. I like to do a little sprint work before I get into pitching because for me being a little guy, I like to just feel really explosive and powerful. And that kind of gives me my feel of athleticism uh, where – some guys, they like to just stretch, get their arms loose, and that's all they need. Me personally, I like to really be explosive, feel explosive. Not that I wouldn't be explosive, but that would that's sort of my process. Sometimes I'll also do some – because I've gone through an injury with thoracic outlet I do this band treatment where I'm trying to loosen up my shoulder capsule, and then I'll go into rolling it out with a lacrosse ball. I do some lacrosse ball rolling almost daily, not necessarily before I throw, but sometimes after. And then once I get into throwing, I'm doing some drills. Uh, I really like to do pivot picks to start. It just helps me feel comfortable with like getting my arm working. And then I go into rocker drill. So that's me trying to feel getting into my back hip, um, unloading from there fast, feeling separation. Um, then I'll, time that up with going into a leg lift with it feeling that leg lift timing with my glove hand turning over at the same time and then from there depending on the day if it's low intent i'll just go into like some moving slow through my motion throws or if it was a higher intent day i'll do some pull downs with like a bounce position hop hop throw or a step behind, just chucking it hard. And then depending on the day, once that is over and I'm, I've gotten that stuff done, then I'll go into some pitching mechanic throws where like I'm just going out of the stretch, working on my different pitches, feeling the spins, trying to execute on locations as best I can. And once that's over, whether I have to throw a pen or I'm done and I have to do PFPs, that's sort of what my day looks like. Um, I really like to take pride in how good I'm doing each drill. I think if you're not doing the drill properly, it's not worth just going through the motions. You really need to understand why you're doing it and what you're trying to feel every time. And obviously try to get the end result with hitting the spot you're looking to hit. And that's how you find that progress every day as opposed to just going through the motions, throwing, and hoping for the best when you get out there and compete. I think if you really focus on throwing with some sort of intent behind each throw, you get a lot more out of it, and it translates better to the field. So that would be sort of what I do. Um, and in terms of different drills that I've tried, um, these are the ones that I found work best for me to achieve what I'm trying to do and get myself bet ready to go for whatever I have to do that day. So that's sort of what I got for you. And the division one life seems, uh, seems pretty tough and pretty strict. So it's definitely a, a bit more, um, rigid in what you have to get done every day like you have certain tasks and you have to be there for them there's definitely pros and cons to both i think being at d3 if you're someone that likes to work hard and you already have that self-accountability it's very good to
go to a D3 school and develop with yourself. I mean, you can go, you have free will to do whatever you want. Um, and I know some other guys other than Will that I've talked to that the D3 level, they really get to just personalize their days to craft exactly what they want to get done and how they want to do it. So there's definitely positives to going Division three in that regard, where D3, uh, D1, three, D it's more very rigid. You have to hit going to each activity every day, and it's not very personalized in that way. You Obviously, there's some, some parts that are personalized to you, but like our team lists, they're very team-oriented. Like we're all doing the same things, and – there's not a lot of room for adding your own flair to it. You kind of just have to get it done, do it. And if you want to do stay after for a little bit and get some stuff done that you wanted to do, go for it. But it's definitely more like we all have to stick to our certain plan and execute on that plan. And I think that's good in some ways and definitely helps some of our guys that are less self accountable with like understanding what they have to get done and, actually getting it done as opposed to if they had free will to do whatever they want, they probably wouldn't be doing it. So it's good in that way. But if you're someone that prefers to be a little more personalized, there's definitely pros to going division three as well. And I think that shows it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'd say personally, I, I like my freedom. So division three has been pretty good to me so far. Um, I, I I really enjoy the days right now. I could do whatever I want. I can, you know, I can I can commute and work, and you know, I could text a coach. You know, say something came up, but you know, I feel like Division One. It's more like it's more like uh, you know, you you signed up, you committed to this, you have to do this. You know, there's not much you could do to get out of practice. You know, there's not many excuses you could do. But like for me, I think I'm not saying that we can just get out of practice, but you know, baseball's still a commitment in division three, but what's more important is, um, I'd say education and getting, getting your, uh, your degree is most, most important for most players here. Um, obviously you'll get the occasional, Oh, I want, I want to go pro from division three, but you know, it's, it's mostly just players that are playing, for fun, trying to win and uh and their career in a good note. So I think division three is definitely a fun place to go. Um pretty laid back. Coaches take it very seriously and you gotta follow their directions on the field, but otherwise there's not much like you know, NCAA I think they limit the coaches' contacts with their players for for um for the off season, I, I think, I think we, we have less practices allowed than division two and division one. And we, we only get a specific amount of weeks and our coaches, they literally can't contact us enough, you know, maybe a few phone calls here and there, but they, they really can't, can't be, can't be contacted much, especially like, if we're seen like on a field with a coach or with our coaches or anything, I feel like that's a, I think that's a violation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's the only off. The only sad thing about it is we don't get much time with our coach, you know, especially in the off season, but in, in season, obviously, you know, we, we practice every day, but you know, once it, once the off season hits or the fall, you don't get to, you don't get to interact with your coach coach as much. So that, that part sucks. Yeah. yeah, I think obviously there's pros and cons to whatever decisions you guys make. Um, I hope this podcast helped you guys understand some differences and similarities between D3 and D1 baseball with their schedules throughout the week. And hopefully this helps you guys determine what you guys want to do with your future. And we'll see you next time.